Yo, yo, yo. Thursday night, so you know it's Brass Like Corner with Half Brush on the Real First channel. Oh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, thanks for tuning in, y'all. Uh, this is a recap video, recap episode. Uh, next week, uh, I am still trying to decide, you know, if I'm going to do, it's obviously going to be a prediction week next week with Night of Champions and Double or Nothing both next weekend. Uh, I'm thinking two shows, but we'll see. We'll, we'll do one Thursday for sure, and then we'll see. Uh, if you guys have a pre preference, if I do it, uh, one show or two, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, we'll wing it next week, and uh, I'll, I will let you guys know on, on my Twitter at the Real Fresh Channel. On Twitter, hit me up on socials, and we'll go from there. So yeah, this week, uh, if you're new to the show, the Wrestling Corner, uh, also brought to you by the Fanboys, uh, the Fanboys is family of mine. Uh, if you're a sports creator, a content, or even a young athlete, check out the fanboys. This week on the Wrestling Corner on the Real First Channel, uh, the, the weekly wrap up. Uh, I, I, I used to call it a recap because I, I used to go through every single match, but now I kind of trim the fat, so to say. Uh, so uh, I'm only going to say this for the next few episodes during the opening, but uh, I like I said, I'm trimming the fat. If you like some of the fat that I trimmed, please let me know. I'll talk about it. No worries. I'm, I'm down. So yeah, we're, we're going to get into ROH. ROH, we're going to get into SmackDown. We're going to get into Raw. And we're going to get into uh, Dynamite. So let's get into it without uh, further ado. Ring of Honor. What do I have here? First up, I wanted to talk about with you guys Ring of Honor. Uh, it was Shane Taylor and Mark Briscoe is the first thing I'm going to bring up. Uh, I, I should also say, <clears throat> if you are new to the show, since it is every Thursday, I do go from the previous Thursday to kind of last night. That's my recap, Thursday to Wednesday. As you can see on the banner here in the bottom, that's our weekly schedule. So we're just scheduling it all out for everyone. So Thursday to Wednesday, this is last week's Ring of Honor. Uh, Shane Taylor and Mark Briscoe. Uh, and man, they're already using Jay Briscoe's name for heat, man. And it's Shane, I come to Shane Taylor, you know. Uh, I know I'm, I'm just American. That shouldn't be uh, that big of a deal. Uh, but it just happened. Or maybe not just happened, I guess. But no, it did just happen. And, uh, the fact that... Uh, but, I mean, Jay would want that. I mean, not that I personally know them. I sound like I've talked to these guys. But uh, I think Mark would, let, would obviously give the okay to Shane. But it just struck a chord. Uh, Mrs. K. Kirsten on Twitch, yo. But what's up? You always catch my solo wrestling talk. So I appreciate it. Uh, so uh, if you can get past that, they did have an awesome match. Pretty good, uh, stiff match. You know my style. Uh, I'm not a. So I, I much prefer the strong, stiff style. Uh, I love Shane Taylor's finisher. I've said it on this show before. Uh, anytime I see his finisher, I'm going to say it. Shane Taylor is, uh, his finish. I don't know what you call that pile driver over the shoulder, but, uh, that, that, that finisher is, uh, it is dope. I've seen him win for weeks with that finisher. They actually let Mark on this episode of Ring of Honor kick out, uh, which uh, that did trick me. Honestly, that was a good false finish. I didn't think, uh, anyone really for uh, that would kick out of that finish. Uh, so that not only did they let Max Briscoe kick out of that finish, they actually let him get the win. Uh, man, everything's feeling like a Ring of Honor. Uh, if you saw me when the AEW first bought Ring of Honor, I was worried. And it's not exactly the same, and it's not exactly as good, but it's close enough. And 
I mean, Ring of Honor is starting to feel, starting to feel like Ring of Honor again. Let me know if you guys agree with that, though. I could be crazy. Uh, let's see. Uh, next up, I have to talk about my boy Samoa Joe was on Ring of Honor. Anytime he's on Ring of Honor, Joe's going to get some attention. Uh, versus Blake Christian. If you've never seen Blake Christian before, he's worth your time. Uh, he definitely didn't... He wasn't done justice in WWE. Uh, he's really making a name for himself now. Uh, in the Indies, Ring of Honor, uh, GCW. I think that's where he kind of... In my opinion, Blake Christian earned his, the most of respect that he gets uh, was in GCW. So anyway, I was, of course, looking forward to both these guys. Anyone who's seen me before, of course, know I, I'm much more of a Joe fan. Uh, and I had beef with this match. I, 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 they didn't. They only gave these guys a few minutes, man. You needed to give Samoa Joe and Blake Christian 15 minutes, man. I, I didn't write down exactly how long it was, but it was not a fill up, like, uh, it was it was way too quick to really have that great of a match, and you know that's not <clears throat> their decision how long that they're allowed to go for. So it was kind of a bummer, and I had the, I th I think they overbooked this. It's not live, but I'm I'm gonna put it this way: they overbooked this episode in Ring of Honor. I feel like because Ninja Mac versus Willie Mac uh, felt rushed as well. And that was really, look, like, even beforehand, I was looking forward to Ninja Mac versus Willie Mac, two of my homies. Uh, I mean, I've definitely been a fan of Willie Mac a lot longer, but ever since I've been into GCW the last couple of years, uh, Ninja Mac's definitely been on my radar. And, oh, I mean, over, for sure. Uh, but, no, they didn't give either of those matches enough time, and it was kind of a bummer. Oh, I wish they would uh, give them more time. Um, so I, I don't want to diss them, but I they all deserve the, you know, a little light. Uh, but they were not given enough time on this episode. Let me know if you uh, caught Ring of Honor, even then. Let me know what you think of uh, what I'm saying. Uh, but that was a bummer. Um, love seeing me, Willie Mack. Love seeing me, some more Joe. And love those other two guys. Uh, so, uh, next is up. Uh, oh, man, this match was awesome. I almost forgot about it. Ka Ka Fletcher of Aussie Open and uh, Tony Deppin. Um, both these guys are really good wrestlers. You know, they're not I, not too much sports entertainers, especially Tony Deppin, but both these guys, super, uh, like, the striking was spot on, like, this was my match of the week until a different match came up. So that this was my number two match of the week on all these up all these shows. Again, that that's not a segment, but uh, it this was my match of the week. Uh, so definitely worth going to watch just this match. Uh, for the striking alone, the pace, uh, and then even when they got into the the chain grappling, it was smooth. Uh, it was awesome. Uh, so definitely go check that out. Kyle Fletcher versus Tony Deppin in Ring of Honor. Uh, and another match that I, I almost trimmed, but I wanted to give a little bit of respect to uh, was Anthony Henry versus A.R. Fox. So to be straight up, I watched this match because of A.R. Fox. I'm, I'm an A.R. Fox fan for sure. Nothing against it. Uh, Henry. It just, I don't know, hasn't been on my radar, I guess. Uh, but both these guys actually put on a really good match. Of course, A.R. Fox was the better, but man, Anthony, uh, Anthony Henry. Sorry, I keep wanting to say the other Henry, but uh, man, good show, respectable show, respectable match. If if you have spare time and you're watching that Tony Depp and Kyle Fletcher match, this match is right after that. You might as well just slip it on, man. Uh, and we're going to talk about the the uh, women's title match. I, I, I try to talk about title matches. Uh, it's going to be a little negative. I'm sorry here. Uh, but we've got Athena versus Sky Blue. Um, I don't understand. I mean, I'm going to call it a push, even though it's like a... 
I don't know if you call Ring of Honor indie anymore. Not really, right? But Ring of uh, Sky Blue's been getting booked anyway. I don't get it. All right. Uh, stupid name. Uh, not that athletic. Uh, at the move set is lacking. Uh, weak promos. Uh, I mean, I'm just saying that's not a champion. I'm not saying I'm not. I guess I am trying to be a little bit, but uh, I, I just don't get it. All right. Um, even if I put all that aside, and wh- I, 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 I watch this match. Okay. Uh, like the reversals and the chain stuff, so slow and awkward. And I mean, you can work on it. Go ahead, but don't put put me in a title match and then not expect me to rip it up. It's not like you're in, on some dark match that I'm not watching and you know training. That's one thing. You're putting you in the title match here. On, I'm judging it on the podcast. That's all. <laughs> don't hate you. Uh. So yeah. So that was pretty weak. The match was far too long. Uh. They fought outside. Somehow they didn't get counted out. There was no. I, I didn't, it was just a normal match, but they, there was no disqualifications for stuff they were doing on the outside. Uh, I don't know. Um, they tried to have Athena kind of uh, go on, the, and she's been on a hot run, don't get me wrong, she's been putting out everybody, uh, and she, I don't, no, no hate, really, not a fan, but no hate, it's, it's respect. Uh, and then they tried to book this like a Big match, and uh, no, I did not deliver. So, not worth it. Not worth it. Uh, but that's my notes for uh, Ring of Honor. Uh, so, of course, that was Thursday. So, Friday, we're going into SmackDown. <clears throat> uh, so, SmackDown. Um... Since this is the first WWE talk of this episode, you, uh, let, let, let's just mention for those who live in Under Rock. Of course, there is the current tournament to crown the first. They were saying first ever, but now they're talking about Edge. But anyway, this new World Heavyweight Championship tournament uh, strap. Uh, so this is a match in that tournament. It's the triple threat with uh, Edge, AJ Styles, and Mysterio. And now, before I saw this, I saw a lot of posts about, oh, Edge never lost this title. Uh, so, I kind of leaned that way going in, but I was wrong. And honestly, they didn't have the best match either. Sorry to these three Hall of Famers. I mean, Edge is already a Hall of Famer somehow. Overrated, but that's just me. Uh, it was kind of an awkward match. They had these like awkward triple submissions where no one really looked like they were doing anything. Uh, I think twice, or maybe three times, Rey Mysterio signaled for the 619, but there was nobody set up for the 619. Um, I don't know. They, Not that they couldn't have a great match next time. Of, of course, there's three professionals, whether I like all of them or not. Whether I think some of them edge is overrated or not. Uh, they could definitely run a good, good match next time, but this one was pretty rough for me. Uh, AJ Styles, of course, uh, if you missed SmackDown, uh, you may not know that, I guess, but AJ Styles did win that match, uh, to advance in the tournament. Uh, so next up, uh, was another triple threat, so of course, if you watched Raw or last week's Wrestling Corner here, you know how this tournament works, but there was two triple threats on Raw. And the winner of those triple threats faced each other. Uh, and that, so that person was Seth Rollins. They're having the same tournament on SmackDown. And those two winners will face each other at Night of Champions for the new title. So this triple threat match was Sheamus. And when I saw Sheamus in this match, I knew, I knew better. Uh, but, I mean, he, who is a better workhorse than Sheamus? Who is more underrated than Sheamus? Uh, people just in like 2022, 2023, I feel like are just seeing Seamus. Shout out Murdoch. We have like a 10, 15. I don't know how old our cat is, but our cat is named after him from like a decade ago plus ago. Um, and maybe nine years. I don't know. But we got an old ass cat named Seamus. Um, and of course, it didn't happen. Uh, it was Seamus, Bubby Lashley, and Austin Theory. Um, 
and what they did at Bobby Lashley actually, guys, was looking good tonight. And I think I was just shitting on him was it last week. Bobby Lashley was actually fast tonight. He tr- it looked like he was trying hard. He opened. He was down to bleed. Uh, he w- he he was down to get cut, win this match. Uh, and then had come back later on, and then he was still busted, so he was um, putting in the work tonight. Yeah, I, I, yeah, last week I shit on him. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm giving him props for this one for sure. Uh, so Lashley wins that triple threat. Uh, of course, I would, I would have preferred Sheamus. Uh, so the next segment, we had a Roman Reigns segment. Of course, we know Roman Reigns' bloodline. They're kind of still playing that uh, storyline out. Kind of a rift between Roman and Solo and the Usos at the moment. So, uh, what happened during this kind of segment? Roman basically gave credit to Solo, kind of saying that Solo stepped up. Solo's the man. The Usos are the problem. And honestly, I, I got thinking. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, I think the Usos would be better off separated at this point from Roman Reigns. Maybe even put on a different show. I don't know if that's possible now that they got drafted to the same show, but uh, to separate them will be great because in the ring, the Usos are far more talented than anyone in the bloodline as far as in-ring talent entertainment goes. Uh, maybe Roman Reigns makes them more money, but he can never out-wrestle them like not even close. Uh, so I wouldn't mind seeing them put back into that wrestler standard wrestler storyline. I don't know if that's too vague, but that's what I'm going to go with for now. Let me know what you guys think of that. Or do you still want the Usos to uh, be with the bloodline? Uh, let's see here. Oh, man. I almost erased this, but it's for the st- Title, so I do, I do like I said about an earlier match. It's the title, so I try to talk about it. But it was the women's tag team championship match. Uh, Liv Morgan, Raquel Gonzalez, Dakota Kai, and ba- and Bailey. Uh, damage control. Uh, the WWE just cannot support women's tag team wrestling. I don't give. That's just it's, it's true. I don't even think that's opinion, and I know people will disagree and say, they go, yes, it's awesome, but you're uh, wrong on that. Uh, so, anyway, I did watch it. Uh, I did give it a chance. Um, my first note, I really don't understand how Liv's over. I've said this a million times on here. Liv Morgan, um, she can't generate any speed. Uh, she can't make any moves look real. She, it's always soft. Everything is like an awkward smile. Uh, so I'm definitely a Liv Morgan hater. I don't know how Liv Morgan got over. Uh, yo, what's up, man? Just doing my weekly recap. Shout out, boom, World Elite Podcast. Yo, if you're on YouTube, guys, if you watch the replay or you're here live. Make sure you give them a follow. Must, must see excellent wrestling content. Hell yeah. Uh, just kind of shooting off about uh, the WWE women's tag team division and how it can't be, it's not enough uh, support in the talent, really. Uh, next up, uh, where are we at here? SmackDown. Next up uh, was a segment Bel Air. Talking about Bianca Bel Air. Uh, she came out to celebrate the longest modern uh, women's reign. And my favorite, uh, Asuka, uh, came out to uh, shake her hand, but then hit her with the myth. So, um, turn Asuka super heel, super push. She- Obviously, Belair's reigns long enough. Let's give it to Oscar, best ever women's champ in NXT and WWE. Easy. Uh, there, there's a reason these two aren't in the tag division. Let's just say that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I would love a heel Oscar push, heel Oscar push run, whatever you call it. I'm down for it. What do you guys think? Down for it? Doesn't matter. I'm down for it. I want it. Uh, so next up, 
uh, was the, the, I guess, semifinals or the SmackDown finals, however, however you want to look at it. Uh, AJ Styles versus Bobby Lashley to see who faces each other with Seth Rollins. Uh, or sorry, to see who faces each other uh, at Night of Champions to face Seth Rollins. I stumbled over that one big time. But you guys knew what I meant. You can laugh at me if you want. That's cool. Uh, so I kind of did tease it earlier when I talked about the match earlier. But yeah, Bobby Lashley did put on a show. Uh, I, I think anyone watching this podcast probably knows AJ Styles wins this. Um, so it, it is going to be AJ Styles versus Seth Rollins at Night of Champions to determine the f- new or first ever, whatever they decided the marketing to do that day. <laughs> Uh, heavyweight champion. Um, I guess I don't want to spoil it. I am doing predictions next week, so tune in to the Real Fresh channel next week and watch uh, the Wrestling Corner on there and get my predictions next week. Uh, but I mean, it's obvious, I think, but we will do it next week there for sure. All right, and next up, I am just going to take a two to three minute ad break, guys. Uh, literally just three, uh, three short clips, and then we'll be right back and we'll finish our wrap up. I appreciate it. Hey guys, it's Brad with College Sportscast. We're presented by Defend Boys. I want you guys to check out my brand new Victorious T from True Victory. Scan that QR code, takes you straight to the website. They're founded by U.S. military veterans. True Victory is a sportswear and streetwear brand dedicated to building everyday champions on and off the field. Our purpose is to transform lives and elevate humanity through the power and unity of sports, positive stories, and serving others. Again, check out that QR code. Use our code to fanboys for a 15% discount and get a great tea, man. It's comfortable. And remember, they're part sports, part street, and always true. Yo, guys, it's your boy How Fresh from the Real Fresh channel. I am just doing a little ad read promo segment here for the Real Murdoch, more specifically, the Real Murdoch on Etsy. You may already know The Real Murdoch from her Twitch channel at The Real Murdoch or from The Real Fresh channel podcast on Tuesdays, Talk and Tokes. But now get her handmade art. All her art is handmade. Check it out on Etsy. It's The Real Murdoch. I, if you can't find her on Etsy, I have the link in the description. Go get all The Real Murdoch's handmade art. Click the link in the YouTube description. Take you right to that handmade art, baby. Uh, be sure to catch her on Tuesdays on Talking Tokes as well, and follow her on Twitch. And I just want to shout out our newest partner, uh, W Energy Drinks. You know, it's an energy drink, you get the powder, you mix it all up at home, but it's better than any of that coffee, any of that energy drink you get. There's no crash, no jitters, no angst. Uh, they have a patented Neurofactor, uh, that's the star of the show. They got brain food, I'm talking taurine, tyrosine, glutamine, uh, more. Uh, they only have the best amino acids. Uh, only the best brain benefiting vitamins. I'm talking B3, B12, vitamin C, much more. I'm also talking 150 milligrams of caffeine. So just like your energy, it gives you that kick. There's no sugar, no maltodextrin, no fake colors, no dyes, no fillers, no BS. You can go to w.gg, w.gg. Make sure you use the code REALFRESH, two words, code REALFRESH. Get 10% off your order and support the show. Or if you'd rather just copy-paste the link from the description. All right, thank you very much. We are going to keep going here with our weekly wrap-up. Moving on to Monday. Uh, So we've gone from last Thursday. We're now at Monday. We're at Monday Night Raw. What do we want to talk about from Raw, guys? Opens up with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn with a little promo about the bloodline. Um, and actually, the Judgment Day came out and said what I was thinking. I am getting a little tired of this bloodline stuff from them. I thought it would end when they kind of split shows. 
and it's still happening. Judgment Day kind of called that out. It was kind of funny. And it was actually a pretty good segment. Sammy Zayn was bashing Dominic Mysterio pretty good. It was, it was a pretty good opening segment. Pretty funny. Man, the crowd hit, is hate Like, the, the heat... Uh, the heat Dominic Mysterio was getting is like the same as when everyone hated Roman. You guys remember when Roman Reigns couldn't even cut a promo? Everyone was just yelling and cursing them out, and he couldn't even talk. Dominic is getting that same heat, but then as soon as Rhea Ripley is on stage, whatever, whatever, fling, uh, they're cheering. It's so funny, man. Uh, Dominic is getting that real heat. I don't think he's good in the ring. He's not, he's not great. I think it's just funny that he he can't even get on the mic anymore. Everyone just boos him off the mic, and it's hilarious. Uh, so that was that. Yeah. Uh, they had a little brawl, and then the next match was the Miz versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, it wasn't a bad match. Uh, I thought Miz was going to win for a minute there. So, like I always say, a, a, a false minute, a false finish that tricks you there, is uh, n- is is not a bad match. So you know we'll take that. The Miz versus Shinsuke, pretty good match. Thankfully, Shin did win. Shinsuke Nakamura, man, when are they going to push him right? That they ha- he was so hot so long ago, and it's n- it's never been the same. Question scare. Uh, we did have a Walter Imperium segment, uh, uh, kind of a Walter promo. Uh, Walter kind of basically saying, Walter, of course, says it in a much uh, cooler sounding tone than myself, but Walter t- saying that everyone sucks, no one is good enough to face him, and that they need to have a battle royal to see who will face Walter at Night of Champions for his. Intercontinental title. Uh, and honestly, this was kind of the most random thing ever. I kind of, and I also have a hot take on this. I don't think battle royales are that great. Like, it's mainly just people like fake falling over the rope and like holding on. You might get a couple good moments when you get down to like, you know, four people, three people, but even then, like. You, you know they're going to be trying to ant, throw them over the rope. I don't know. Battle Royale is just 100% my thing anyway. Uh, and, then, and then they had let Mustafa Ali win of all, th- all things. Now, I, I have good things to say about Mustafa Ali. I think he's a great wrestler. I think he's doing every single gimmick that they ask him to do. I think he should have stayed babyface a long time ago and kept it with the lights and stuff. That shit was fire. Uh, WWE's kind of been telling them, oh, be a dick. Oh, you're positive. Oh, do this. Oh, do that. They kind of don't, they kind of been switching them up too much. Uh, pick something for him to do and let him go do it. And, um, uh, but this isn't it. Uh, I am not taking Mustafa Ali seriously in the match against, uh, Gunther, uh, or Walter. I don't know. What, yeah, Gunther, sorry. Uh, like, have you ever seen Ali do anything close to what Walter can do? Now, that's crazy to say because, of course, Ali is far more of a sports entertainer. He can do the flips and shit, and he's good at it. They're not soft. No disrespect. I like it. But I I can't see them having a serious match. I think he's going to get the shit slapped out of him. I cannot see him winning or even going home without bleeding through his chest. Uh, but that'll be funny. What do we have next here? We've got Cody Rhodes coming off a tour bus. Can anybody explain that to me? Why is, uh, does Cody Rhodes need a tour bus like he's John Cena or like The Rock or something? Does he really tour on a tour bus? Or was that staged? Someone answer me that. If you're live, if you're not live. uh, uh, Because that's crazy, man. There's no way Cody Rhodes makes way more money than when he gets a tour bus all around the U.S. like that. It just sounds... It's the same with all the... Like, he's the only person that I know that gets pyro in a suit. It's so cringy. 
anyway, that's all I wanted to say about Cody Rhodes. Uh, next up, we do have Sami Zayn versus, uh, sorry, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens versus the Judgment Day. Uh, now, I do want to say, I think the Judgment Day are growing on me. I think I like Finn Balor's little swagger. Uh, I think that uh, uh, Punishment Martinez is finding himself. Um, er, uh, Damian Priest, I mean, not Punishment, that's sorry, my, uh, Damian Priest. Uh, man, I don't like Dominic Mysterio, but he brings heat. Uh, everyone loves R- uh, Rhea Ripley right now, so, I mean, the Judgment Day might be around for a while. Uh, I think I like the tag team of Finn Balor and Damian Priest as the best part of it. Uh, but they've got heat, they've got booing, they've got cheering. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see where among the factions they kind of end up being if they stick around or what. Anyway. Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens versus Judgment Day. Uh, solid match. There was tons of different storylines going on with like stuff going on the outside. They ended up kicking out Rhea and Dominic. Uh, Rhea and Dom Dom. Uh, Paul Heyman's on the on the entrance ramp on the phone, just on the phone talking. Okay. Uh, and then even after the match kind of did even really pick up in speed with lots of good high spots, there was lots of good interference. Uh, Imperium actually comes out. Uh, so everything got wild out there. Um, and they actually let Judgment Day get the W. Uh, now Imperium, of course, big part of that. So crazy. Uh, that, so that would have to be the match of the week as far as I didn't see the finish happening. Crazy high high spots, crazy speed, uh, so many different dynamics that were not botched. Uh, so I think that is going to be a match of the week there. The Sami Zayn, versus, uh, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens versus Judgment Day from Raw a few days ago. Uh, we are going to get to the final wrap-up show that we watched just from yesterday, this week's Wednesday night, AEW Dynamite. Few th- few uh, notes to talk about on that show. Uh, the first one I want to talk about here, we did have a false count anywhere mass between Roderick Strong and Chris Jericho. So that sounds like something we, we, we're going to want to talk about. That sounds, I mean, if someone builds that, Pretty sure we're, we would all want to see it. Uh, now, it started out really good, honestly. But uh, let's see. Yeah, it started out really good. Roderick Strong comes out. Good striking. They were, like, in the first minute, they were just red, red, super red. Uh, they were striking each other stiff. You know, my Seamus Cesaro type guys with the strong strikes. Uh, I know we're talking Roderick Strong, Chris Jericho, but they were just. Putting them in there, so to say. Um, now that was the first five minutes. They is the false count anywhere match, and they kind of they kind of tried to prove that to us so many times unnecessarily. I found after they had the first five minutes, it got kind of very slow. Walk around the the stadium to this spot, one table, super slow pin. Take ten minutes to get to the next spot. Uh, so I think after that first onslaught, yeah, the people in the stadium were more excited because they were walking toward them and it seemed exciting on TV, but really we spent 10 minutes going to three different table spots for three, basically three moves. And, uh, I just found that a little slow. They eventually got outside where Adam Cole helped Roderick Strong get the W. But uh, re- started really strong, kind of slow at the end. That's my take on it. Uh, next up, we got Roosh versus Jungle Boy. Now, let's be real. I know everyone that ever hears this, 
that I mean that might not be true, but I'll say it. Everyone that watches this thinks Jungle Boy is better and likes Jungle Boy more. Let's be real, Jungle uh, Roosh is miles ahead of Jungle Boy. Okay, in the ring, actually everywhere, Jungle Boy doesn't even hold his cane and strap his boots. Doesn't hold a candle. Roosh is miles miles ahead of Jungle Boy. Now they're having a match. I don't know. It's AEW's booking, of course, uh, but it just it doesn't seem right to me. Now, right off the top here. Uh, Roosh turned up the heat, man. Oh, yeah, I was trying to recall what happened. No, I got it. Right at the beginning of the match, Roosh threw him into, like, every uh, barricade around the ring. And he was running and slamming Jungle Boy into the barricade faster than his legs could keep up. He, like, it was hilarious, man. Jungle Boy was getting introduced to that. Uh, and I know Jungle Boy's stuff. You can take it. He's proven his worth. I don't disrespect Jungle Boy. If my words are literally disrespect to him, that's not my intention. I'm just saying what my opinion of them are at the moment. Chill. Roosh literally was carrying him around, slamming him faster than his legs would help him walk around. It was, man, he was beating him up. It was, it was, it was good. Um, until the end, it was basically the Cody Rhodes Brock Lesnar match where the obvious bigger, better guy beat him up the whole match and then got beat by a little roll up. I think Jungle Boy might have had the tights. Let me see if I wrote that down. Uh, yeah, I had the trunks. Yeah, did, exactly. Um, man, Roosh beat him up the whole match. He got rolled up and then he got. He did win the match, Jungle Boy did, and then Roosh and Preston Vance beat him up some more. Um, but that did lead to Derby Allen and Sammy Guevara coming out. Oh, the three of the four pillars. Uh, in my opinion, those are some pretty weak pillars. Those are excellent uh, side side pieces, not side pieces, accent pieces. Those are that. Those are good window pieces. At, uh, those three, uh, but you need real pillars, and I don't think those are real pillars. Uh, honestly, I think, I mean, Kenny Omega is probably one of the real pillars. Those three aren't aren't pillars. Next up, uh, is something that they scheduled or claimed to be the main event: Switchblade J White. Uh, what? Why are they calling it? Um. Uh, Bullet Club Gold over here in AEW. Uh, so it's Switchblade Jay White uh, versus Absolute Ricky Starks. Um, they were having a really good match, actually. Uh, I don't have to say, you know, I don't have to say spoiler one for anything. Why did I think of that? Uh, they, they, they were having a really good match. They were really going at each other. And then what happened basically, or exactly, is that Ricky Starks got disqualified on purpose so he could beat them up with the chair. So that it tainted the finish big time, which kind of ruined the match. And not only did the match itself get ruined, the, the chair so- shots were so soft. It barely made a sound. He was a Ricky Starks looked like he was afraid to hit them boys with that chair. And um, that's all I really have to say about that. Uh, so then I guess uh, after this, they had a basically a promo, not a promo segment, but a, yeah, a promo segment, a segment. When did we start having segments after the main event? Shouldn't the main event of a wrestling mat, of a wrestling car be a wrestling match? I mean, that's just me. But after the main event, they had this. Kind of a Kenny Omega, Don Callis, trying to figure things out. That didn't really happen, last, uh, last too long. Let's get to the point. Uh, this was all just to lead the Blackpool Combat Club to fight the Elite. And when I say the Elite, it seems that they have uh, the four are back together. Uh, 
the Young Bucks were out there. Kenny Omega was out there. It, it was three on four. The other four. Blackpool Combat Club, obviously. Uh, but Hangman came to the ring, and they were on opposite sides, and Hangman's with them. So basically it all, for some reason, they felt that uh, they were more important to re- bring the Elite back to four uh, than the main event. So that kind of irked me a little bit as an old man. Just a little bit. That's all I really have to say about that. And that would be the whole episode. So next week we are going to do one long prediction show with the AEW predictions and the WWE predictions or split it up. Follow me on Twitter to find out for sure. Uh, We'll see about that. I'm leaning to, but I'm not totally sure yet. Uh, but, uh, of course, it's the Wrestling Corner on the Real Fresh channel. Subscribe to the Real Fresh channel on YouTube and Twitch. We're on Twitch if you like Twitch. Uh, main source is YouTube for the most content. Uh, the Wrestling Corner every Thursday. Uh, also presented by the Fanboys. Shout out to Fanboys. And the biggest way to uh, give us support, guys, is that Debbie... I'm waiting on my restock at W right now. I ordered the, the blue raspberry. If you go to it, that's the website, w.gg, w.gg, use the code real fresh. You get 10% off and it kicks back to us a little bit, helps support the show. It's good, uh, it's good sugar free energy. It's uh, cheaper than the energy at the store. So check it out. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you guys, uh, for next week's uh, predictions. I want to know your guys' predictions. Uh, so we'll see you then, and uh, that's been it, yo, Wrestling Corner, how fresh, peace out.